to be going live in just a bit. Hello, wonderful parents. I am so excited to be talking with Andrew um, tonight. He was talking to us about the peace framework that he actually made himself, but um, he's a fellow parent coach. I'm always excited to bring people in the field um, onto the group and to add their value and their insights. So Andrew, thank you so much for being here with me tonight. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a pleasure. So I'm just so excited to introduce you to the group and tell us a little bit about yourself more than uh, you introduced yourself with. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me, Tina. Um, what can I say? First things first, uh, I am a husband and a father of two little girls. They're nine and six. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody, well, except for me in the house in the moment, they're a little bit under the weather. Oh. So, um, but it's that season, right? So, um, yeah, so that's the home front. Um, I am a, a very, I have a very full life. I serve at church and I play, I sing, I'm doing a lot more speaking. Um, and the main reason why I'm doing that is because after 17 years of, you know, counseling and coaching and psychotherapy, I transitioned into coaching and speaking because I want to reach more people. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, I mean, growing up, I had my own challenges with, ang with anxiety and even depression a little bit, but I didn't know what it was, you know, in high school and, you know, elementary school, um, but that's what led me to do this work. And then um, certain things, they're generational, right? So yes. it wasn't until a couple of years ago um, when I saw my daughter having a really, really difficult time. Um, it actually, it struck a chord in me. I, I, I panicked because I know how debilitating anxiety and depression can be. Absolutely. So it just really moved me to jump into high gear. And because I knew what I knew, I could help my, my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that not every parent is equipped with, you know, seven, 10 years of, you know, postgraduate school right. and psychotherapy and all that stuff. So um, my goal now is to help parents help their kids. And uh, yeah, so that that's me in a nutshell. That's beautiful. I love that so much. So tell us about the peace framework. Tell us how you came up with that and, and what it is. Well, um, the peace framework, it's, it's something that's woven into um, the Help Them Be Brave program, which is a six week online course that I, I have and that I can walk people through um, in group settings uh, or individually. But ultimately, um, the acronym covers six fundamental things that any parent, one, um, can do. And number two, they're gonna be these elements that impact um, situations where kids are struggling. Um, with any kind of intentional mood. So, um, sorry, intense emotions. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll walk you through it. Yeah. So the, the P, it actually, it stands for prayer, which ultimately is your vision. It's a picture of where you want to go, what you want to see happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times, even whether you're people of faith or not, people tend to opt for prayer when they're when they're desperate, like, oh yeah. my God, please, right? Yeah, and it, right. it's something where we're begging as opposed right. to prayer being actually something that's a lot more, uh, how would I say, um, it's a lot more uplifting. Sure. Yeah, right. it's a lot more uplifting. So ultimately, um, the way I understand anxiety, it's a picture of the future that's negative. Mm -hmm. And when you picture a negative future, you're going to feel anxious in your body, right? Mm -hmm. um, so interestingly enough, if we are praying out of desperation, we're actually feeling anxious ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the alternative is to actually consider things that we want to have happen and invest in those kinds of pictures um, because ultimately that's what we want to help our kids do. Think mm -hmm. differently, to picture something different. Absolutely. So P is all about literally creating a vision that you want to see 
writing it down, and there are action steps towards that. So there's okay. the P. And then the E is really significant. E stands for the emotions, which is the language of the heart. Okay. So um, whether you're talking about CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, or dialectic behavioral therapy, but emotional focus therapy, <laughs> right? Yep. yep. All, any kind of, All right? the acronyms of the therapies out there. Exactly. <laughs> you're going to want to really understand emotions and how they work. Um, one of the things that I encourage people to do is journal. Um, and the way that I journal, I, I integrate um, what I call the ATI process. There's these wonderful acronyms. Um, but ATI stands for awareness, and, and tolerance, and intentionality. Those are three things we want to be increasing. But the focus here is tolerance. We want to be able to tolerate our difficult emotions, right. the unpleasant ones, right? So we want to learn how to do that for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But we want to help our children learn how to do that, too. Right. So um, also, as parents, we're not perfect. You know, nope. sometimes, <laughs> you know, sometimes we get it wrong. Which sometimes is OK, we get... right? We're, you know, never going to be perfect, which, you know, exactly. our kids aren't perfect either, right? They're not expecting us to be perfect. So <laughs> yeah. exactly, exactly. And, you know, because we're not perfect, we're not always going to handle situations well. And the, the downside of that is when we don't handle them well, we actually hurt our kids. And that can increase their isolation, increase the anxiety, increase the depression. So it's important to be able to address that. Mm -hmm. um, I, um, so I wrote this book. Can you see? Yay. Uh, yeah, a few years ago, it's called The Art of a Genuine Apology. Um, when we talk about you know, learning the language of the heart. It's important to be able to revisit emotional injury. It's important to be able to revisit those upsetting moments so that we can do the repairing, so that we can heal the relationship. Yeah. So we don't get locked out of that place, right? Because um, I've worked with teens, as you know, for years and quite often they don't tell parents things um, because there have been incidences where they've been hurt and they know their parents love them, but it's another thing to be able to have that open, trusting relationship. So that's what we want to nurture with the language of the heart. Mm -hmm. So that's E. The A stands for assessment. And a lot of the times we as parents don't know what to do, don't know what to say, but when yep. we understand how to assess the level of risk, that will help us to decide how directive to be in the moment, right? Okay, so what's the assessed so, level of risks? What do you mean by that? Certainly. So when I think of risk, I think of uh, imminent danger, okay. bodily harm, or you know, damage to property or, or things like that. If mm -hmm. they're doing something that's unsafe, it's important for us to be very directive, very clear. Right. Um, whereas if what they're doing is upsetting to you, but it's not dangerous, Mm -hmm. that's not necessarily the time to be directive. So right. when the risk to harm to self or to others is low, then we have the opportunity to go slow and really mm -hmm. use questioning uh, questions and not commands. Right? Yeah, we questions are yeah. the gateway to their heart, right? Like, exactly. so for you instance, I just wanted to share this really quick. My yeah. um, five-year-old did not want to go to the movie night. He was like, I want to be with dad. I want to be with dad. Cause he doesn't like, He's so sweet. He doesn't like people to be alone. So he's just like, I don't want you to be alone. He's like, but I want to be alone. <laughs> but, so it's like, why don't you want to go to the movie night? Well, what if I get a fever? I'm like you didn't have a fever all day. Why would you get one now? But you know, so like I went through the process, like I checked his temperature. I'm like, you're at 98.6. You're fine to go. But it was like, you know, he actually let me know what his fear was. He, he apparently thought he was going to get sick. I, I don't know why, but if I didn't ask that question, I would never have gotten to what actually was going on. So that's why it's so important. Absolutely, thank you, keep going. <laughs> yeah, certainly, mm -hmm. and that, that, that's, that's a perfect example because mm -hmm. um, I'll come back to the um, assessment that ties in well with um, the letter E towards the end, exploring motivation um, and harnessing um, and offering affirmation. 
So yeah. like you said, you you really got to the heart of what was going on for him. What what was his motivation for staying home, right? There was a fear there. Um, and that's something that we get to offer affirmation about. That's that's right. great that you're you're aware of what you're feeling and you can articulate that and you yeah. can, you know, you're caring about your safety. Like that, those are wonderful things, right? Right. So yeah. because because there wasn't like immediate danger, right. you were able to appropriate your your course of action right, right. which is awesome. right which and he's, so he responds a lot better yeah. to questions than anything else like he doesn't respond to yelling or he doesn't respond to like get this like he responds more to questions like that that's what i've noticed with him but um yeah so perfect good yeah yeah that that's that's it's beautiful Mm -hmm. um because there, there are different kinds of parenting styles and oh, yes. cultures that we come mm -hmm. from and i you know i come from um my parents are jamaican their parents are jamaican and their parents parents are jamaican so um very very rarely do we ask our kids questions right we're, we're, we're telling them what to yeah. do yeah like, okay so done. now you brought me to something that i have to ask so how was it for you because you know, you, you, are you the pioneer in your family for this kind of framework and this kind of like gentle parenting and you are right. Would you consider? Yeah, I would, definitely, I would definitely say so. Okay. You know, so then my, how was that experience for you? How, was it like, was it difficult to, yeah. Like, tell me about that. So you mean to transition into leading this way? Yeah. Yeah. And um, like, how, how have you, how have your like relationship with your family changed? Like, is it, something where you had to like explain to them or did they accept it? Like, yeah, I want to know that whole, whole process. Well, that's a very good question. I, <laughs> I, you know, it, would, it wouldn't be fair to say that I'm the pioneer. I'll, okay. I'll say my mom, she, she is much more, um, she's much more warm and nurturing. And, you know, she wasn't a stickler or a very, very strict parent at all. Mm -hmm. Um, my dad was the more heavy handed, heavy handed sure. one. Sure. Um, so that, that's not new to, to me in that sense. Um, but culturally, you know, this is quite different. Sure. Um, but, you know, but ultimately, the way that I parent, it's actually coming a lot from how I'm learning how to live for myself, right? My own personal journey of growing and learning about anxiety learning about emotions mm -hmm. that's really what's helped me and seeing what's worked and what hasn't worked with clients or for the past 17 years yeah right yeah absolutely. so it's really been informed that way yeah and may i just say this um it only takes one parent right it only takes one parent to set a tone of, of safety for your child i mean um you know it, it, i've i've talked with comparison and everything but in, as long as there's one positive, safe adult, a child is going to be okay. So I just wanted to interject that. Would you agree with that? Well, I think every parent makes a difference, you mm -hmm. know, and oh, yeah. I think it's important yeah. for a child to at least have one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what's, what's interesting is um, I, I believe that when we when we parent from a place of anxiety, which can kind of present itself even as control um, or even anger and all those things, there's often a lot of unresolved trauma for the parent. So that part that they're parenting out of, mm -hmm. it's not actually a healed and mature place, right? right? right. When I lose it with my children, it's not because you know, usually it's warranted. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's usually either because yeah. I'm tired or there's something going on for me where I'm not able to access all of my resources. It's right. not my child's, it's not my child's responsibility for me to parent in a particular way. That's always right. up to me. Right. right? So right. I think when, when, like you're saying, when it, it takes one person to shift a family culture, right? It starts with one. And I think when we see the benefits and the fruit of doing it a particular way, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I think that's that's the thing that changes the, um, the, the I call it the family thermostat. Yeah, you know, the yeah. Thermostat the yeah, because yeah. I mean, people see you do something different. They're like, 
what are you doing? Like, I, I want to know how to talk to my kid like that. And um, yeah. then it's like, then you start to have those conversations and you open up and yeah, it's, it's an amazing thing. I love that. Um, so you were at the, a, I don't think you got to the C yes. yet. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, C is creating a map to calm, creating a roadmap to calm because our children don't know how to calm themselves. So it's our opportunity to help them understand how it works. Of course, we get to do it for ourselves, model that, whether it's talking about breathing or showing it to them. Um, but like I was saying before, it's important for me to know what factors are contributing to me not being calm. And similarly, we can help them understand for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we often do, especially when our children are feeling anxious, we can see that what they're worried about isn't necessarily factual or, or probable. Right. And then we try to reason with them. Mm -hmm. But when we feel anxious, it, it, we see things in our minds and then it kind of impacts our body. So our bodies get energized with this kind of negative energy, sure. that, but then we don't have access to the reasoning parts of our brain. Right. So trying to reason with your child when they're activated and when they're really upset, right. it won't be effective, right? right. Exactly. You might successfully get compliance in the moment, but compliance isn't the same thing as cooperation or collaboration. There's right. no real change or understanding. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand how to create calm in the body first, and then we can address the stuff that's happening in the mind and thoughts. So that's the yeah. C. And then E is where we explore motivation and offer affirmation. Um, so we want to understand, like you came to understand about your son, what was the driving factor? And, you know, I, I share with people what I call three core needs, mm -hmm. right? There are three core human needs that we experience in healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. One is for safety, right? That your son was worried about. He's worried mm -hmm. about his safety. Mm -hmm. And another is for significance. We want to know that we matter, that our presence makes a difference, but also there's strength. We want to know that our choice matters. Mm -hmm. So anytime one of those three things are missing from a person's sense of self or in a relationship, mm -hmm. we are going to try to get that need met. We might not be aware of the motivation, yeah. but that's usually behind even the very things that we're upset about. So it's good to understand that. So awesome. that's the peace framework. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Let me give you a story. Um, so today I was at this like um, Halloween party at the YMCA and four kids did this. And I, I want to just address this for a second, um, see what your perspective is. So these kids were really like not able to go to like a bouncy house or they were not able to get away from their parents and like four parents said she just wants me to go in with her or he just wants me to go in with him and so what is that is that anxiety is that did that hit the that they weren't safe factor what part of of those three was that child in your opinion what were they feeling yeah i imagine well he just wants me to go in with him Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would imagine they're probably feeling anxious or mm -hmm. unsafe or uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that would be definitely something to explore. And then what would you do in that moment with your child if that was like your child? How would you be well, able you to know, help them? So for starters, um, that's probably not the first time they've yeah. experienced that. Yep. So. Um, and I generally speaking, I prefer to deal with things at home, sure. right? Mm -hmm. um, so I would find examples of where that might be the case, but let's just say we're there. We would want to, first of all, label that emotion, get an understanding of what's happening for them. Right. Are you, what's, what's, what's going on? I, I ask my kids, what's going on for you? How are you feeling, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Um, and, and start to, help them tolerate that particular emotion mm -hmm. and typically when kids are worried about something or adults are worried about something they're picturing something so right. we want to understand so what are you what are you picturing what are you imagining right and that will give us a very very clear understanding of what they're worried about right and instead of trying to dismiss the worry mm -hmm. or saying you don't need to worry about that 
we want to empower them by saying, okay, well, how do you want to address that? What would you like to do about that? Right? What other options do you have? Right? Mm -hmm. We want to figure out what's most important to them. Right. Um, so those, because when you, once you get a clear picture of what the worry is, then you have a host of different options because that's really what's empowering to the child. So if they think the only way for them to handle that is for you to go in with them, they're still pretty much on a one track mind mm -hmm. uh, mindset. Mm -hmm. So we want to explore other options because ultimately they probably wouldn't want you to go on, in the bouncy castle with them till they're like 25, right? Right, they're not gonna <laughs> hopefully not, that, right? <laughs> exactly. They're probably gonna want to feel that sense of independence and they're probably mm -hmm. gonna feel really good about that, mm -hmm. being able to go you know, on their own. So inquiring about that, harnessing motivation, figuring out what other things do they want, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I would, uh, those are some of the avenues I would go down, but that's how I would, that's where I would start with the peace framework in this situation. It's okay. The I mean, can I give you another one? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, um, I'm, these are just stories. I, I just happen to be like in my attuned parenting today. This is not like, you know, I'm perfect here. Okay. So today, um, same kid, same little five-year-old, he was climbing this rock wall and it got to a point where, and I was scared of this because there was this like rock on the rock wall. And then there was like a little, little, little path where he could keep going. But he like saw that and like must have pictured in his mind that he was going to fall. So I, I just like, I'm like, I got you. I got you. Like, and then he went and then he went the whole, well, he, he wanted to come down. So I got him down, but then he saw his brother going and he was like, okay, I got this. And then he went and they went through the whole rock wall and it was like, it, it was high, but I just like, I caught that moment where he was just like, oh my gosh, like what's going to happen. So how would that situation, like how, how would you apply the brief framework there? Would it be about the same thing? Like what's going on? You know, yeah. Well, <laughs> Did I do good? <laughs> I, 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 no, it's great. I think I'm. I'm curious. Was he actually in danger, um, or was he just worried from his perspective? It could have been both. Like he could have been feeling both that he was worried about being in danger and like maybe falling or um, because it it was a rock wall, but there was like a fence, so he was holding out of the fence, but there was this very tiny little like path that he could go and he was putting his foot on the rock i'm like no no don't put your foot on the rock like you know put it he's like i don't know i want to go down i want to go down I'm like okay all right so fine not gonna push it and then he sees his brother and right. he's like okay like it, it like it seemed like a switch just flipped. right yeah. okay so th this is this is perfect I, I think you you made an excellent choice and you you assess the situation, right? Mm -hmm. So there might have been risk to harm. So you were present and you were being directive as well as mm -hmm. being assertive. You could mm -hmm. see that he was worried. Um, so you were dealing with the emotions in that sense. So I think that's great. You see how they overlap. You were present and able to help physically, but also to support emotionally. Right. And I love the fact that he, he demonstrates in this situation that what we see really impacts us. Right. So he actually saw how it could be done. Yeah. And that motivated him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He, and he was like, I did it. I'm like, I know you did. It's good job. Exactly. So it was really good. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it, it just speaks to the reality that um, what we see really does shape how we live. Right. So whether we're seeing something in real time or we're actually imagining it. Mm -hmm. that vision really impacts us on an emotional level and we live from that place so he saw that he saw his brother do it he knew it's it, it was possible right yeah. so that informed how he made choices and he felt uh, very proud about it after the fact yeah. so that's awesome. yeah and they're not they're not um shy from risk they they are definitely risk takers so i like knew he was probably gonna end up going back to it but um it's it's like it was a challenge and he met that challenge because he was just like, right. I got this, like, I can do this. And, and I was like, I'm right here. Like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm like, you're higher than me. And he's like, you're higher than me. I'm higher than you. I'm like, yeah, you are, buddy. I was like, please don't fall. But, um, you know, I was right there. 
So it was just, it was just a really good um, time of entombment today, which, um, which that's the goal, right? That's the goal. It's not that's the, awesome. it's not the um, majority of the time always um the parents are in that in tune thing but as more as much as they can be in tune that is the most important objective we have agreed, agreed. Yeah. yeah absolutely oh my goodness this is so great um so is there anything you would like to leave my community with tonight one last peril of wisdom you know i i honestly believe that parents are positioned perfectly to support their kids and um, if, you, if you aren't sure about what to do, then you acquire the support, the tools, the strategies. But ultimately, over the years, I've, I've helped a lot of teens. I've helped a lot of kids. Um, but the challenge still remains when, kid, when kids go home and their parents don't fully understand the changes that they've made and that they've experienced. And then it's still part of the family culture, right? So then they revert or it's part of their, their peer-based culture at school. Right. So they right. revert to what they know. So when we can grow alongside our, our children and inspire them and model for them, I think that's the biggest influence. Uh, I think that's why we're here for them, right? Not to control them, but to really support their development. And I think that's, that's a great thing for us to be able to do. Yeah, essentially we become their coach, right? We coach them through life. We, we train them through, um, you know, we lead with empathy. And then the beautiful thing is what I've caught in my kids is that they can do it right, right back. They can, they can give you the empathy right back. They can um, catch things that you're trying to teach them, but it's, it's, it's gotta be caught. So. That's the, that's the amazing job we have as parents. So yeah. Yeah, totally, Excellent. Agree, totally agree. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Andrew. Um, do leave us all your links and anything, any page or anything, a group that, that my uh, community can join. Um, your book also, put anything into the comments. Um, I'll have a live stream up on the group and um, you'll be able to do that in just a little bit, so. Great, awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank well, you, Andrew. My pleasure. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the peace, peace framework in next week. I'm going to be doing a, a webinar called How to Ditch the Anger and Parent in Peace. Okay. So, yeah. 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 I definitely want to um, put a link in so I can, I can join that. That'd be great. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, everybody.